Okay, let's kick off this review. The ICM kit, it's uh, labelled Chernobyl 2. Uh, firefighters, what, what we have is actually what's really on the box. It's pretty good. It's a contained diorama by ICM. They released one kit before Chernobyl 1, which was um, the technical Zill with the um, container on the back with a sort of diorama. But this one is um, a kit that is a brand new release of the fire engine. The fire engine is called um, an AC4137A. It's built, it's, it's based on a Zill uh, truck. And um, as soon as this was announced, I really wanted it. Uh, not because of the Chernobyl theme, but uh, to get a, a, uh, a Russian fire engine or uh, Pajani Technica I thought it was just a really good idea for a kit uh, it's quite a nice layout there of the um, of the vehicle there probably even more interesting these vehicles today are still in use and I'm even thinking inside my town here in Petrozavodsk um, they probably still have one kind of interesting. So uh, let's open this up and see what's inside. Here's the sizable box. One very big bag of screws all together. And then another sprue for the figures and bits. We'll look at all this in detail. This is not included. This is a free gift from armorhobbies.ru. It's the uh, fire engine red. Bit of a pity, it was originally um, resin zill wheels, but they changed it. Inside here you've got the um, diorama base depicting those terrible events on April 26th. I'll open this up and show this to you properly. Uh, quite a good idea, this cardboard base. It really is um, quite attractive. And we've got a full colour. Um, Instructions, probably I'll look at the instructions first actually. And then separate instructions for the fire crew. And there's a very, very small set of uh, decals. And that's everything inside the box. Let's have a look at everything in detail now. Okay, we'll kick off with the instructions. As I said, um, you get the history of the vehicle both in Russian, Sovietsky, Bajani Avtomobil and in English. Um, I'm going to write all this down inside the description so you can uh, read that in your own time. The, you get the paint call out straight away. The references are Ravel, Tamiya, and then the actual name of the colour in both Russian and in English. So, not really that many colours. Um, if you're unfamiliar with ICM, they are a Ukrainian uh, manufacturer. Uh, pretty good kits, actually. Um, everybody knows Mini Art. Mini Art are, can be a little bit um, hard work for some people because of the level of detail. ICM, uh, they have, I'm not going to say simpler kits. Simpler sounds as if they're not as good. But they are. Um, they can be easier to construct. Let's put it that way. Not as big a part count. You've got the sprue map there, and there's quite a lot of parts that are not required on this version because there are previous uh, versions of the Zill truck um, that will have a common sprue. Um, instructions are quite straightforward. It's actually piece by piece by piece. Very nice and simple. Um, Straight away you can see that the actual ladder frame for the truck actually includes the springs molded on. That's going to be a massive benefit. It has a detailed engine. Building up suspension components. There's nothing really, um, uh, really to call out. I mean everything's like well laid out. By stage 50, seems like a lot of steps, but it's because they've um, broken down every single detail, and that that makes that this straight away. I would say, um, uh, I'd say like beginner intermediate should be able to handle this just by looking at the instructions. I can sort of tell that 
it's 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 got the it's not as complex as um, as some other kits. Uh, you build up the cab now by stage um, fifty one onwards. It's got a detailed cab. It's got all the parts inside there. I've got some reference photographs on the Zill that we're going to use when we when we build it as well. And you'll see that the um, the actual crew compartment is very sparse as it is in the actual vehicle. So uh, we've got that right. The cab sort of mounts up in multiple components and then it drops onto the body and then the front grille goes on and the roof. Everything's all separate. And then we'll probably be dealing with, this is the um, fire pump equipment that goes inside the rear body. This is a pumper. Now we're already up to stage 100. It's a really good book. In fact, these are sort of some of the best instructions I've seen in a long time. Everything just clear and um, just well laid out. All the um, all the colours are called out throughout the instructions as well by using references there. Like J refers to the colour map at the front. Stage 109, you've got the, the sort of tank is built up and the pump. So you have got that detail at the back there. That's uh, important to know. And then you've got a... This is the option, variant one, variant two, is leaving the access door to the pump either in a closed or open position, simple as that. And then I think we're building the ancillary equipment that goes, is mounted on the roof, which is correct. So you've got the ladders, you've got these um, extra lengths of pipe, some rails that go on, more ladders. I think, I'm not quite sure, I think these are sort of what they use when they want to create like a big um, shower, I don't know what you call it, but I think they sort of get placed on the ground when they want to pump water out in a certain manner. So by stage 145, the vehicle's complete, just add on the last details. There is a nice um, sketch of the vehicle completed. And right in the back, here we are, this is the only option that you're given. You saw that the decals were very small, that says Pripyat on it. So the only option you have is the Pripyat um, um, fire engine. And of course the paint schemes, red and white. So all these um, white areas need to be masked off and painted separately. There aren't any uh, decals for that and um, really um, that's probably the best thing to be honest. We seem to have all sorts of troubles. Colouring, let's have a look at the quickly. Let's just check out the um, crew instructions. Well, instructions and the paint map is all in one. So what you get here is four fire a fireman. Uh, one with his um, uh, crowbar. I forgot what you call these things. And then one of them dealing with the fire on the hose another guy directing it and these represent here you've got these these represent the graphite from the reactor um, interesting there's a little sprue of the pieces it says optional there optional 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 don't know what that means actually see what sort of color there. I think they are sort of like a beige the um, we'll bring up some photographs but these uniforms are sort of they look like semi-military, actually. Let's have a look at the parts now. This is the one big bag of sprues. And the thing that you might be concerned about is if everything comes in one big bag, is anything broken? Well, it's not. So we'll look at these parts in detail now. Quite a few um, frames inside here. Draw out all the detail parts and have a look at them. Let's start off with this frame here, which is obviously the the main cab. Uh, one thing, um, 
yeah, a little bit disappointed that the doors aren't separate on the vehicle, so it's a closed cab model. There's no warpage on the parts at all, they're all flat. Uh, let's check out these fenders. Fenders are pretty good. Fairly thin, they're not too, um, not too chunky. Grill detail's pretty good as well. I love the shape of these, um, these sort of um, 1960s style. Um, former Soviet vehicles, I just think they look so good. Next sprue is um, details and also you've got the, um, the, the ladder rack, so that's the length of the vehicle there. These are, okay, they're slightly bowed out if you look carefully, but that might be just from, but they're flexible enough. So all we need to do is when we're constructing it, just check with the, the um, with the straight edge how all that works. Here's the front screen. This is all um, nice, delicate, nice frame there, and there's part of the engine block as well. The details look really good. This part here is the um, brush guards for the front headlights and. If anything could do with photo etch, it'd be this part here. But they aren't too bad. There's a little bit of flash in there, which is what you'd expect. They are quite thin. Um, maybe look at replacing it. Maybe not. Maybe just build it entirely out of the box. We'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. Here's the steps for mounting at the rear of the vehicle. They're pretty good. They've got a tread plate detail on them as well. So that looks pretty good. A similar sprue, this one's um, okay, right. Some of the parts obviously I have to be careful about this. I just noticed that we've got the ladder rack twice, so I don't know which one's which actually. I have to check. <laughs> so you've got like a lot of spares, I suppose. One of them's gonna be longer than the other, isn't it? So I need to be uh, careful of that. Yeah, be careful that you use the right sprues okay but anyways it doesn't matter They're the same, same uh, idea that you've got the leaf springs attached to the main chassis rails um, there's the radiator there they've got all molded on detail look at the springs they're absolutely awesome really nice detail there's all the uh, transmission drive shaft prop shafts more engine the fuel tanks There's the uh, radiator fan there. More details on this sprue. There's the ladders. The ladders look really good. They're really nice and thin. I was worried they might be a bit chunky or something. But um, everything looks good. Everything looks in scale. And it should be a nice, um, comfortable build out the box. I think this kit is going to be very popular. I just have that feeling. It just could be one of those ones that, because uh, it's different. It'd be nice to see maybe some upgrade kits come out for it as well. Here's part of the um, the uh, piping for the, obviously the water. The and these are the tubes that go on the top of the vehicle as well. Those pipes that go on the, on the top of the vehicle as well. And there's some ancillary equipment. There's one of those hooks that they use. And that is like the monitor that fits on top of the cab with the, so they can spray from the actual vehicle. This other sprue here is the, um, the tank body. Everything's really good. I, I like the way they've got all the panel lines are like really tight, really nice. Might have to actually even draw them out a bit more. We'll check. They, they remind me of an aircraft panel line. It's really subtle. Everything's good. There's no sink marks. There's like flash in some places. But I mean only on those really small components. It's a very high quality kit. I'll bring up the pricing details. But bearing in mind that I bought this in, 
in uh, in Russia, so you might get better or worse prices elsewhere. Transparent parts are separately bagged that stops them getting scratched, of course. You've got that nice, delicately curved windscreen there. It's really thin, crystal clear. As are the other components, there's the lights. So you've got those details. Transparent parts. Uh, wheels, you get, uh, obviously the hubs are uh, plastic, styrene. This device here actually gets mounted on these um, Zills, they had um, adjustable ground pressure control so you could deflate and reinflate the tyres, so that's part of the device there. Um, yeah, I really wish I'd got the resin ones that they said they were going to send to me, but I can't have everything. Anyways, we we'll, might have looked for some elsewhere, see how we feel about it when we build it. And um, actually, the, the, the wheels are really nice and oh, they're really nice and chunky rubber. Got a nice tread pattern on them. They look good, but we know that the resin ones, if they had all the sidewall detail, which these don't, they will look really, really good. So. Yeah, we'll probably will look for some aftermarket. But that's not what we're concerned about. Out of the box, this really does look pretty good. Let me just see if there's anything. Let's go through the figures next. Okay, finally, we're looking at the sort of diorama parts, which are the um, the firemen, obviously. Uh, pretty, pretty good, actually. Um, ICM do make very good figures. So, now look at the sort of face detail. On the guys pretty good for plastic and um, yeah the uniforms everything looks pretty tight they've even got the uh, BA breathing apparatus I want to see what the helmets look like helmets are like really there they are look at the helmets they're like military helmets look really good then you've got these delicate details here as well Here's part of, these are the packs of the BA that go on the back of the guys. Now, I bet when they were at Chernobyl, I bet they weren't even wearing them. Poor souls. And here's the graphite. This represents the graphite from the reactor for your diorama. You get quite a lot of that, actually. So you get two sprues like this with accessory components. There's a few knockout marks in them, but... Uh, Big deal, you know what I mean? These are just bits and pieces. There's a carabiner down here as well. I bet that clips on the uniform, we'll check that out. Then you've got a piece of this um, vinyl type tubing that's obviously to run a hose. And then you've got more transparencies that represent the visors for the um, helmets. And I don't know why we've got two of, the, two of them. Are they exactly the same sprue? Yeah, they are exactly the same sprue, we just seem to have two of them this case and that's all the parts the only thing I'm going to do quickly I'm just going to build up the figures quickly for you okay so I partially built up one of the figures just to show you basically what they look like pretty good not bad not totally complete of course just wanted to sort of just give you the impression of how these figures are and uh, considering they're included within this sort of diorama excellent value so, uh, really great kit, looks really good, highly recommended, and of course, let's build it.